Hello, Design and Analysis students, and welcome back. Today in SPSS, we're going to be looking at how to calculate a correlation. Remember that a correlation coefficient, which would be the small letter r if we're doing a Pearson correlation, or r sub s, r with a little s, if we're doing Spearman, is a way to look at how two variables co-vary, that is, the degree of relationship between them. If both variables are moving in the same direction, we will have a positive correlation. If the variables are moving in opposite directions, this way or this way, we will have a negative correlation. Sometimes a negative correlation is also called an inverse correlation, and it means as we move up on one variable, we go down in the other. In SPSS, we can run both Spearman and Pearson correlations, which are ways to look at relationships between two continuous variables. Continuous variables means we have at least ordinal, interval, or ratio data for both variables. There are other possible correlations that you could learn in more complex statistic classes, like the phi coefficient or the point by serial correlation that we will not do at this level of analysis. So for you, for now, you need two continuous variables, ordinal, interval, or ratio, to be able to do either a Pearson or a Spearman correlation. Remember that a Pearson correlation is what we have if we have interval or ratio data and both variables have normal distributions. So you're going to need to run a histogram first to see if that assumption is met and you'll need to know the scale of measurement. If you have interval or ratio data and approximately normal distributions, you can run Pearson, which is the pickier of the two tests. It's particular. All of them start with P's. If either of your variables is ordinal, or either of your variables is not normally distributed, it's skewed, it's lumpy, it's wonky, you can use a Spearman correlation. A Spearman correlation, like Spearmint gum, is stretchier. It's a little more flexible. All of those start with S, Spearman, stretchy, Spearmint gum. So remember that Spearman is what you need if you have either an ordinal variable or a non-normal distribution or both. In SPSS, to do correlations, we're going to go to Analyze and Correlate and Bivariate. Bi means two, so here we're doing a correlation for two variables. Today, what we're going to look at is the correlation between age and height. To some degree, as we get older, we expect to be taller, but this levels out in young adulthood um, in our college students, so we may not see um, a correlation here. This is where we're going to come, bivariate correlations with age and height, when we want to, want to run the correlation. We can do Pearson or Spearman, and we can look at two-tailed. We know there's a correlation, or think there is, but we're not sure which way it'll go, positive or negative. Or we could do one-tailed. This is if we expect a certain direction. We believe pretty strongly it will be a positive correlation, or we believe it will be negative. Under options, we'll want it to show the means and standard deviations, which will work if we have a Pearson correlation, which is based on the mean. It will not allow us to do means and standard deviations if we're only doing Spearman correlation because Spearman is based on the median instead of the mean. But if we're doing Pearson, we'll click means and standard deviations and continue, and we'll be able to run our test. And for right now, I'm going to click both Pearson and Spearman to show you the relationship. And I'm not sure if this correlation is going to work out or not, so I'm going to go with two-tailed, which is the more conservative test. You get more power if you have a one-tailed test and can say the direction you think the variables are going. That is, you can load all of your probability instead of at the two ends of the distribution all onto one side, so you're more likely to pick up effect um, without making a type 1 error. So I'll run the correlation first to show you what we get. But we'll need to go back and look at our histograms to make sure we know which kind of correlation we need. So the first table, it gives us the mean, the standard deviation, and the sample size for the people that filled this out. And then if we've only got two variables, it will give us a correlation matrix where it looks at the relationship between each variable and each other variable. If you wanted to run the correlation between three factors or 20 factors all at the same time, you could do that, and then you would have a really big correlation matrix or um, a place where it shows all the relationships between all of the factors, each one with each other. 
within the box, you'll notice that um, some of them have a correlation of one. That's because it's the correlation of the variable and itself. This is kind of redundant and we don't really need it. But then it shows the relationship between each factor and each other factor. And the two parts, if we imagine drawing a triangle here at the bottom and here at the top, these will mirror each other because here we have age, then height. Here we have age, then height. So they're um, doing the same correlations here. First, it flags the, the correlation coefficient. This is your R or R sub S, R for Pearson, R sub S for Spearman. This is the significance level or probability that we get for that correlation based on the sample size. When we're reporting, we'll need to report the degrees of freedom, which is the number of people minus two. So our degrees of freedom would be 249. Our correlation coefficient, our R, is 0.158 or 0.16. And this is significant. It's a small correlation, but it's positive. So positive correlations don't have a mark. Negative correlations will have a minus sign. In this case, we have a small relationship between age and height. As people tend to be a little older, they also tend to be a little taller. If we look at the Spearman correlation for this one, we do not get a significant correlation, right? This one is actually um, possibly the one we need too. And we're like, wait a minute, I got something significant here out in my critical region. I did not hear what's going on. Well, in part, it might have something to do with our distributions. So we need to make a graph for each of these factors to see what the data looks like. Again, if it's skewed, we won't be able to use that Pearson correlation. We'll have to do a Spearman instead. Age is a ratio variable. Zero years means you're not alive yet. And height is a ratio variable. Zero inches means you have no height. So we know that by our scale of measurement, Pearson's okay, but we wonder why Spearman um, might be needed. If we look at age, it's approximately normally distributed, but it's pretty leptocurtic. We've got a lot of 18 and 19 year olds, and it's slightly skewed to the right or positive because we do have some older students. There is enough skew or enough difference from that normal distribution here that that makes us skeptical about it being normal in which case Spearman is our better test. Let's look at the graph for height and see what happens with that one as well. If we look at height, right, that distribution is more normal. This one would be fine to run a Pearson test, but this one makes us sus suspicious to run that test because it's too high and too skewed. So in our um, analysis, we would need to go with the Spearman correlation, which does not reach significance. So in this case, there is still a slight, very slight positive relationship, but it is not significant enough for us to say that those things are related in young adults. Again, if we were looking at this in kids, absolutely they'd be related. As kids grow they get and get older, they get taller but we level out in adulthood, so that relationship seems to have less impact. The other thing we can do to help us see the relationship is to build a scatter plot. A scatter plot looks at the connection between each of these two factors for each person. So we can define a simple scatter plot. We can put one of our factors on the y-axis and one of our factors on the x-axis. We would want to add good titles. Uh, for time's sake, I won't do that here. Um, and we don't need anything in options. But after we've got those two variables and click OK, we will see the connection between those two things. Here's what it looks like if we put in age and then height. And if we go back and do it the other way, you'll see that they kind of flip. We could put height and then age. In a correlation, no factor is predicted to come first. We're just looking at relationship, not causes. So we could also have a graph that looks this way, right? So this graph and this graph are both appropriate. 
Now, if we try to look at that correlation coefficient, if we double click on the graph, we can have it put a line of best fit. This is the same thing as the correlation coefficient or the regression line that will help show us whether it looks like there's a more positive or negative relationship. Once we've got that added in, we can close out and here's our fit line. And again, we see that visually it is a very slight positive correlation, but it's not strong enough that we've met their criterion. It has not been in our critical region. It has not passed that critical um, R value for our sample size. So if we were doing a hypothesis test, we, have, we would need to retain the null. This isn't good or strong enough. If we put the fit line in on the second graph, we'll see the same thing. I can double click it. I can click the button here to add a fit line. And again, still looks slightly positive, but this is not um, a solid cluster. It's got lumps and twists and turns. This is what we call heteroskedastic. It is not, does not have homoskedasticity. The club is not nicely fit around the line. And so um, in our young adult sample of Psych 2231 students, there is not a significant relationship between age and height. Thank you.